Hey everybody, I'm Natalie. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about, is it time to upgrade your dentist? So as you know, I've been doing a lot of temping for the last year since COVID, and I have seen a lot of offices, and I've seen a lot of extremes in those offices. So we're gonna talk about some of those today. Are we gonna talk about should you, when you walk into your dentist, look around and go, hmm, maybe it's time for an upgrade, maybe it's time to look for a different dentist. Um, so we're gonna mainly talk about two types of offices that you should be avoiding, and we'll go from there. So let's get going. All right, so maybe you've been going to the same dentist for the last 20 years. Awesome, I'm so glad you found somebody you really feel like you can trust. However, when you look around, has your dentist kept up with the times? Are they still using old film x-rays or have they switched to digital? Now, that might seem like a no-brainer, but I have run into a lot of offices that are still using film and processors. And my biggest beef with that is when you were dealing with film, you've got that little light box that sits across the room from the patient, and the film is this big, and the tooth is this big, and the cavity on it just this big. And the doctor's like, okay, so you see a cavity on this tooth over here, and the patient's like, I can't even see the film, like what are you talking about? And um, it just, a lot of times, especially with the older dentists, their eyesight's not as good as it used to be, and they're not using their loops to look at the film just when they're hopefully in your mouth. Um, so they end up missing a lot of stuff on the film. They just You just can't see it because it's so little. And I have walked into a lot of offices where the hygienists, honestly, are missing a lot of tartar that's visible on the x-rays, but because the x-rays are so little, they're not seeing them. So the nice thing about the digital x-ray is you're tooth is as big as your screen. And I have seen screens that are probably, I don't know, 70 some inches wide, just huge, huge things. And, and they'll have like the Netflix screen above the chair so you can sit and watch TV. And then when they sit you up to talk to you, they've got their own computer screen behind your head where they can look at stuff. And they've also got maybe a big one in front of you where they can flip it around and you can look at your own x-rays where your tooth is this big and the cavity's like, you know, and you can see what they're talking about. It builds a lot of trust and it's really a better way of not missing what's going on in your mouth. So is your dentist using older equipment? So we're gonna start with the older equipment ones first and then we're gonna talk about like the really new equipment and what can be the problem with those offices too. All right, so next time you go into your dentist, take a good hard look before you sit down. Is the chair you're about to sit in cracked vinyl? Are there barriers on the chair? Is it even vinyl? Uh, I walked into an office again recently, and this I have never seen before, but the chair was cloth. Cloth, people. Um, and there were no barriers. There's no plastic like bag over it or anything that the patient would sit on. It's changed in between the patients. It was just plain old cloth chair. And it was like these old car, uh, those old couches that have the super woven material. So there's literally no way to clean this thing. And it was probably from the 50s or 60s. Like it was, I've never seen one like it. I've literally never seen anything. I didn't even know they ever made a dental chair like that. And think about every person that has sat in that chair over the last 50 years or however long um, has left skin cells there that are probably still there. So <laughs> again, it's not something you can clean. Um, old vinyl, we use a lot of very harsh chemicals on our vinyl chairs in dental offices or in a leather, and it cracks like crazy after a couple years. And it just looks tacky. It starts to maybe pinch people's skin as they sit down. Um, we, it's, it's much harder to keep clean, of course, because you've got that barrier that was vinyl that you can put the chemicals on and clean that's now open and exposing that foam or whatever's inside. Um, and it just, it looks tacky. Now, they are expensive to replace. I understand why dentists don't do them, but it just makes your office look so bad. Um, on the same note, is there carpet on the floor in the operatories? It's fine if it's out in the lobby, but when you walk back and you sit in the chair to get worked on, is there carpet on the floor? Now, the last office I worked in uh, that was a permanent office, which I loved, that was my one major beef, was there was carpet on the floors. He was pretty good about getting the, that carpet cleaned routinely, which was awesome, because that is expensive. Um, but most offices that have carpet, 
they're not cleaning that carpet. And then your kids are coming in and they're playing on the floor in the corner while you're getting your teeth done. It's just things to think about. So if you have a wood floor, if you have a concrete floor, if you have anything else, honestly, that's a solid floor, it's much easier to clean, to mop every night or you know, in between patients even. Um, but to have carpet on the floor, it's like having carpet in your bathroom, which is you know something people used to do and thankfully don't anymore. <laughs> Okay, so the next part is, if you have to, say, spit, um, do they have the suction that's doing your suction, or do they have, uh, are you having to sit up to spit in the little miniature toilet bowl? Um, I haven't seen them very often, but occasionally I still run into those, which is kind of shocking, because it's like I, you know, when I went to hygiene school 14 years ago, I, my dentist had that chair where you have to sit up to spit, and I went to school and went, Where's the little toilet bowl? And they goes, those haven't been around in 30 years. I didn't know. My dentist was one of the guys that just never upgraded his equipment. And cause you know, it still works. And I get that because again, buying a new dental chair is like buying a new car. They're just about that expensive. It's horribly expensive. So, you know, don't go too rough on your dentist, but do look around and go, nee. <laughs> crowns. If you need a crown, are you having to come back in two weeks to have the crown done where you wear a temporary in the meantime and the lab makes it and they come back? Or are you having it done in chair that day where within two to three hours of you going in, you're out, you're done, you never have to come back. There are benefits to both. Like if you need a gold crown, obviously that has to be lab made. If, um, it's gonna be one of your molars where like one of your front molars where you're gonna be chewing it on more. It's probably better to have maybe one made in a lab because they do tend to be harder and they will last longer. But the convenience of having that milling machine in the office, plus it's super cool to watch. You have this little thing of like plastic and it has those burrs and 10, 12 minutes later, plop, there's a tooth and you just glue it on and it fits beautifully. It looks like a tooth. They're fabulous. Um, a lot of offices have switched to using those. I really like them, but um, you know, again, there are benefits in, you know, to, to doing it either way. But it is really nice if you are a busy person and you walk into your dentist and they don't have to have you come back in two weeks. You're in, you're out, you're done. And just something to look forward, look for. The other thing is, does your dentist have a panoramic x-ray? The panoramic x-ray machine is the x-ray that goes around your head. You bite onto like a little stick and I have a video on it, but, um, and it goes around your head, takes usually about ee, 10 to 14 seconds and takes a big picture that spreads out your whole face. You can see from ear to ear, jaw, sinuses. Um, those are super important to be getting at least once in a while. They're not just for wisdom teeth. They are for tumors in the jaw. They are for anything, uh, if you're needing like implants at some point, if we're checking on baby teeth, are they, you know, do we have adult teeth coming in? There's really important to have one of those in the office. And I've seen quite a few offices that don't have one, which I find very interesting. Impressions. Are you still choking on alginate every time you need to have something done? Uh, so I'm sure you've, maybe not all, but some of you have had impressions taken where they need to make molds of your mouth for bleaching trays, for ortho, for, all, there's a many reasons they'll take an impression of your mouth. And they get those little trays and they fill it for a goop and they shove it way down your throat and they make you sit there for like four minutes while you're choking to death. Um, that's all kinds of fun. However, did you know there's a machine now called iTero that will do that for you with pictures? Pictures! You stick it in the mouth, it goes, it takes all kinds of pictures, and it makes a model, a 3D model, in the computer. You don't have to take impressions anymore. Ah, it's awesome. It's not for everything, but boy, if you walk into an office and you see one of those, you are one lucky person. Okay. Next step is your hygienist. Yes, I'm going to get after us now. Is your hygienist taking perio probings at least once a year? If you're on a perio maintenance where you've had the deep scaling and root cleaning, the deep cleaning, you should be getting it every three to four months. Pretty much every time you come in, that needs to be tracked and they should tell you what your numbers are. But at least once a year, if you're normal cleaning, do you know what your pocket depths are? Are they telling you? Make sure you know, because a lot of offices, and again, I'm seeing this quite a bit, and it's very disturbing because this is considered, you know, 
basic care is you need to know what your pocket depths are so you know what to do at home and where your health is. Uh, pocket depths are a very big indicator as to how healthy you are in general, not just in your mouth. So uh, I'm seeing just a lot of offices where, where patients will come in from an old, you know, from a different office and they'll go, oh, I've never had that done before. Or what do these numbers mean? I don't know what these numbers mean. Ah, you should know, you should have your hygienist teaching you what these numbers mean, why they're important, and how to improve them if they're not ones, twos, and threes. So shame on you hygienists. I'm watching you. Next up is your dentist pushing silver fillings still. Silver fillings are really not a thing anymore. The nice thing about the silver mercury fillings were they are amalgam fillings, silver amalgam fillings, they're full of mercury. But the silver amalgam fillings was they last forever. They really do. I've seen them last 40, 50 years before they finally start to break down. Um, occasionally they break, typically the tooth will break around them, honestly. Because they're metal, they tend to expand and contract uh, with hot and cold foods and whatever. And over time, the crystal of the tooth that's holding that filling in will break off and leave the filling sitting there, which is always fun to see. It's like, oh dear, sorry. Um, so they lasted forever, which was awesome. Were they healthy? That's still debatable, honestly. Uh, and then like now we have the white fillings, which don't last as long, honestly. If you're getting 15 years out of them, you're doing really good. But at the same time, at least they're pretty and they're not leaching poison, possibly leaching poison into your system. So, you know, if you're, going to an office and you look around and pretty much all they're doing is silver fillings, especially on your kids, run, just run, just get up, walk out. All right, two things about cleanliness. We're in the COVID era now, so things are more intense than they used to be. We've always been really good about barriers and wiping everything down. And like dentistry's done overall very well with that. Honestly, I think better than hospitals sometimes. Uh, but, uh, like when you walk into your dental office, have you checked the corners of the room? Like, are things clean? Are they really clean? Are there dust bunnies? Cause I've seen quite a few offices lately with a lot of dust bunnies. And that really bothers me. Uh, there's, you know, if like, if you had a snowstorm that morning and there's mud on the floor, that's one thing. But if the snowstorm was last week and there's still mud on the floor, you should be a little worried. Now let's talk about barriers. Do you see any? A barrier is something that is between essentially the germs from your mouth on the operator's gloves and the equipment. So there should be at least something where your head sits, um, sometimes it's like a whole chair cover. Um, the lights, uh, handles need to be covered. The light switch, if it's an action switch, needs to be covered. Anything that they're going to be touching while they're in your mouth and then touching stuff in the room needs to be barriered. And that can be a lot of stuff and it's a lot of plastic. And here in Colorado, we like our recycling. We don't like filling the world full of plastic. However, due to diseases like COVID, uh, we really have to keep things covered. So when you walk into your dentist's office, look around, make sure that like the keyboard is covered and there are things that if there's going to be spray, whatever, all that's getting wiped down and buried. Um, if, you're, if you're not seeing plastic on anything, <laughs> look out, because it's freaky. <laughs> Another big warning sign for what's going on in your dental office is if there's a high turnover rate. If you walk in there and we're talking corporate, private, you know, if it's a private practice and the associates like the dentist has, is the main dentist and then he has associates that come in, they're turning over fairly rapidly, that's not a good sign. If the staff, front desk, hygienists, you know, if every time you walk in there it's new staff, there's something really ugly going on behind the scenes. And it could be everything from, hey, he's just a jerk uh, and a horrible person or she, uh, and a horrible person to work for. Or it could be that, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen everything, but it could be that they're over-diagnosing and um, I worked for a guy that all of a sudden one day I went, there's nothing on that x-ray. Why is he doing a filling on that tooth? And the assistant's like, yeah. That's a question I've had for a couple months. 
what, you know? So like if you're, if there's stuff that's not ethical going on, you'll see a big turnover rate. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, hey, a new dentist moved in and the staff are used to the old dentist and the old ways and they don't want to change and there's a changeover. That's not such a big deal. Sometimes it can be. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell. As a patient, I would, I would think it's hard to tell. But if you're going in there every couple of months and it's a new dentist and a new, you know, not a good sign. So that kind of wraps up our old offices. Now the older offices, again, dental equipment is ridiculously expensive and dentists have a very high overhead. You have staff that have to be paid really well. Dental, you know, hygienists are paid well. The staff is paid well. Um, I don't think dental assistants are paid near what they're worth, but for the most part, the dentist is paying a lot in staff. There's a lot in taxes. There's a lot for equipment that just to keep the basic place running. And then you start adding in, you know, computer systems. Are they using paper charts or are they on computer systems? That's another thing we didn't talk about, but make sure they're on a computer system and not on paper charts. Um, are, you know, just upgrading everything is really expensive. Lasers and this stuff is, you know, $100,000 easy. Um, for just a couple of pieces of equipment, your, your dental x-rays are like $5,000 per sensor. You know, please don't chew on those by the way. Uh, so, you know, it's like, I get it. And as these dentists are headed towards retirement, they don't want to put that kind of money. Like they want to retire. They want to have enough money to retire. The next dentist can take that on, but it's not fair to that next dentist who has to come in and literally, you know, they just bought the practice, bought the patients, bought the staff, and you spend all this money and you look around and go, and now I have to upgrade all of the equipment. Uh, so there's that. So the older offices with the old equipment, that is very much a convenience for whoever owns the practice. It's just convenient to not upgrade. Okay. So it's kind of lazy for the most part. Obviously that's, you know, it's not going to be a hard and fast rule. The other offices we need to talk about are the super high end offices because there are two extremes. There's the one where they're doing paper charts and, you know, film x-rays and they have cloth chairs in the office. And then they have the other and where everything is gorgeous and clean and beautiful. But in order to maintain that, they're doing a lot of upselling as well. So if you're sitting in the office chair and every time you turn around, they're trying to sell you something, you have to have an adult fluoride, even though you haven't had a cavity in three, four, 10 years. Uh, but they want you to get that $27 fluoride treatment that you have to pay for out of pocket. Um, they're recommending laser treatments on very healthy gums. You know, if you have healthy gums, you don't need laser treatments. Uh, if you have, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that they can do to get some extra pennies out of you. And sometimes they're over diagnosing where you'll go to one dentist and you're fine. And you go to the next dentist and, and you've got 27 cavities and sometimes that's legit. I've seen it. I've seen patients come in from offices that had, um, either really bad sensors or they had film x-rays and they come into a nice office with good equipment and we look at their mouth and we go, how did they miss this? Look at all the decay in here. And the patient goes, what are you talking about? You know, and we're trying to educate them. And then you don't want to throw the previous dentist under the bus as much as you do. Uh, but it, you know, so it's, it's not like, oh, well I went and this happened to me. So ergo they're lying to me. Not necessarily your previous dentist may have lied to you too. So sometimes it's good to get multiple opinions and you know what, honestly, learn to read your own x-rays because <laughs> that way you can go, Hey, I'm going to go no on that. That Okay. Yeah. That one. Yeah. That one I can see. Okay. That's a bad. Yeah. Let's, let's fix that one. <laughs> that gives you a little more awareness and uh, maybe we should do a course on how to read x-rays. That could be fun. So other things with the super high end offices is are they, do you feel like cattle? Like as the patient, do you feel like cattle when you walk in there? Um, is the hygienist with their, with, does she, has she had time to pee? <laughs> so sometimes, and this is becoming more common, which really bothers me, but it's called accelerated hygiene. And we've talked about it in previous videos where you're working two, two, sometimes three chairs, usually two at the same time 
where I've got a patient in one chair with my assistant who's taking x-rays, polishing and flossing, and then I'm scaling as fast as I can on the other person for 15, maybe 20 minutes, and then we switch, and then we have to leave time for the dentist to come in for at least 10 minutes per patient. So your time with me for education, for actually getting your teeth cleaned, uh, is really, really, I mean, we're talking maybe 10 or 15 minutes. If you are a patient that builds tartar, if you have gum disease, you are not, I guarantee you are not getting cleaned. Uh, so if you have an office where they have an assistant that's how, and sometimes there's an assistant because people are running behind and somebody will come in from the doctor's side and help out and that's amazing. So please, you know, that's, but if this is a traditional thing where they have a hygiene assistant, uh, that could be because they're working multiple chairs at once, which means they're just there to make money. The hygienist is ridiculously tired and it's just one big cash flow and that's all they see you as. So keep an eye out for that. The other thing that drives me completely crazy about those offices that are super high producing is they have these morning huddles in the morning and they go, congratulations everybody. Yesterday we made, I was, I was in one the other day. It was, it was an enormous amount of money, it was an enormous amount of money for one day and 18, $20,000 I think uh, that they made in one, one day of production. They had four hygienists, four hygienists, two dentists. I don't know. It was a lot of staff. It was a big office. Um, and you know, when you have that many people working, yeah, you're going to make more money, but it was okay. We're trying to work towards this thing where we're competing against this other office. And if we can find, when we start hearing the word, we need to find production. That's where we run into trouble is when they're overly zealous on, on diagnosing and they start to push product where you don't necessarily need it. Um, you know, everybody needs an electric toothbrush. Yes. But does everybody need to be on prescription fluoride? Does everybody need to be having, you know, all this other stuff? Not necessarily for some people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But for everybody, no. And it's hard to know when it's just you and you're going in there and you can't compare, but do kind of keep your ears open. A lot of these offices, um, you can hear somewhat what's going on in the other rooms and, uh, you know, listen to the other conversations and see what's going on. Uh, there was an office I worked at. Every patient that sat in my chair was diagnosed with a crown, whether they needed it or not. And I couldn't believe that it was a, I think that office has five, like sister offices. I couldn't believe that people weren't looking at this particular dentist's production and going, hmm, something fishy here. Um, but he hadn't been called out on it. So that was weird and I've quit working with them. Um, so just things to pay attention to. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful for you. And you walk into your dentist next time and go, yeah, I found my home. These people are doing it right. Or you go, hmm, you know what? Maybe it's time to look around and look for some better reviews. So I hope that was helpful. Like and subscribe. We'll talk to you guys again soon. I'm working on the insurance one. Uh, insurance is a lot harder just because as a hygienist, we're not trained in insurance. So I'm having to interview people and kind of get an, I'm trying to get like a broad overview of insurance because we're not going to get a nitty gritty on this channel. It's not happening. Uh, it doesn't interest me at all. If it interests you good, do your own research, I guess. So we're working on it, but yeah, that's coming. I'm not sure when life is crazy. We just dug out a 13. Well, this morning was 13 inches, but total we've had about 24 inches in the last 48 hours of snow. So uh, it's been, that's why I'm not working today. Yay. <laughs> We're stuck. Anyway, like, and subscribe. See you guys next time. Take care and keep flossing.